World Rugby folks issued a directive about some of the laws that they want to see enforced. Not so much anything about law changes because all of the things on the board, which World Rugby has pointed to, are already in the game, but they just want to see them looked at a bit more. We're going to go through them, uh, the things that are kind of highlighting. You guys can let us know your thoughts on whether you can see these things realistically changing or not, and if you think they'll make any difference to the game or any other areas you think they should kind of uh, look to make changes. Personally, I'm glad there's not been a kind of sweeping raft of actual law changes because I do feel like rugby tinkers with the laws too much and every time you tinker with something, there's always an unintended consequence. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens if any of these things actually come into play. Um, the first thing they're really highlighting seems to be speeding up the play. They want to get ball in play time higher than what we've seen in uh, in recent times. And they are looking at things like um, putting a shot clock up for some of the kicks. So for conversions, you get 90 seconds from the time the uh, the try is awarded. The top 14 obviously already does this in France. I seem to remember the MLR also does this in the States. But uh, otherwise, it's kind of up to the ref to kind of keep the time. No matter if the, uh, the ball rolls off the tee, you've got 90 seconds from the time the uh, the try is awarded to take your shot, otherwise the kick is disallowed. Same with penalty kicks, except the time is 60 seconds. Remembering the fact that it's 60 seconds from the time they opted to shoot at goal, rather than from when the ref blew the whistle for the penalty. So, um, yeah, it's probably realistically going to be a little bit more than 60 seconds as they kind of um and ah about whether to take a shot at goal or go for the uh, touch or whatever. But, um, yeah, basically they want to... Get uh, goal kickers taking their goal kicks within the allotted time. If you don't do that, the kick's going to be disallowed and it's going to be a scrum. There's another very generic one that just says players must not waste time. Otherwise, they'll be free kicked. Which, uh, I don't know how you enforce that one because players want to waste time. Uh, <laughs> players want a breather. I'm not sure if... Um, I Many of you guys have watched the old MLR, but the MLR took a lot of these kind of law variations to a more... Uh, well, basically a more extreme end with um, trying to keep the game moving. Like, they only allow one scrum reset. Uh, otherwise, the ref just has to make a call. I think the guys just have to tap it and go. Um, and also, they've got an area behind the sticks that's, like, called the try zone or something like that. Seven-point zone. I forget what it's called. But if you score a try directly under the sticks, there is no need to take a conversion. It's almost like a penalty try. So because the kick is right in front... They don't see the point in taking 90 seconds to uh, to take the kick. It uh, should speed up the game, right? Unintended consequences of that change was players who are looking to take a breather, guess what they do? They would score their tries. Even if they were unopposed under the sticks, they would just take it around just, just to the side of the try zone. Just put it down just to the side. So it's not an automatic conversion. Uh, you still get your 90 second breather as your goal kicker takes a moment to take the shot at goal. So that's what I'm talking about. Like the players want to waste time. They, they want to catch their breath. So yeah, and every time you make a change, something's going to go maybe not to plan that you didn't see coming. But anyway, there's a law there that says players must not waste time. Otherwise they get free kicked. So yeah, we'll see. We saw it happen last year with uh, Australia and the All Blacks famously, but we'll see if uh, it happens anymore. I can't see it happening that one personally. Um, lineouts must form without delay. There's so much faffing about for line-out time. I would like to see that one enforced. Whether they enforce it or not remains to be seen because the teams tend to have little conferences and whatnot before line-outs these days. And uh, the scrum must be ready to form within 30 seconds of the uh, the mark being made for the scrum. Uh, the fact that you got 30 seconds, you need to be ready to form. Like you haven't even started forming up. Uh, I'm not sure that one's going to make a whole lot of difference, but... Um, Obviously, the scrums have kind of slowed down from the old days because they, they want to make them safer, which we can understand. But certainly at set piece time, there's a lot of faffing about. And like I said, the guys want to rest, man. This is in big units. Um, it would actually be kind of nice, I think, if the game was played at a slightly quicker play, a pace. Maybe some of these guys got a little bit smaller, uh, a bit more mobile, but able to, to run more rather than just take breathers all the time. But um, guys are certainly bigger than they used to be. If you go back and watch a game from the 80s, the size differences is incredible, but the game was certainly played at a quicker pace uh, back in the day. So, um, yeah, that's that's the kind of time-wasting thing which World Rugby is looking to 
get sped up. Basically, don't waste time at goal kicks and set piece. And then there's another generic one, just don't waste time generally. Right, we'll see. We'll see if that's enforceable. Um, less reliance on TMO, I think, is a good one. They basically said that the, um, the TMO is there to deal with clear and obvious stuff on the field. Basically, I think that's why the TMO was initially introduced, was to get rid of absolute howlers, right? Where a guy has clearly dropped the ball over the line. And they, you know, the ref was at a bad angle or touch judge didn't see it. They would still award it, but then you would see the replay like, oh man, he dropped it. Like that's the whole reason you want the TMO, to get rid of the howlers. Some guy punches a guy off the ball, it's really clear, but nobody saw it. Maybe TMO has a look at it after a player says, that guy just punched me or eye gouged me or whatever. That kind of stuff, you know, is, is really what the TMO is there for. And they basically said, TMO is spending too much time taking ages to look at stuff, which is not clear and obvious, which I think... That's right. Like if they want to do the judiciary thing later and really take their time to look over some kind of controversial stuff, that's fine. But I mean, 50-50 calls being agonized over for like four minutes is probably not what we want from the TMO. It's, it's basically to get rid of the howlers. That's for mine. But um, yeah, that seems to be the direction World Rugby is looking to go with the TMO. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much in favor of that one. Uh, the water carriers thing, if you remember, they, uh, <laughs> in response to some, I think basically in response to Razi Erasmus doing the old water carrying thing, they, um, they determined that water carriers were causing too many uh, unnecessary stoppages in games. So they limited the amount of times water carriers could come on the field, limited who could be water carriers and the amount of water carriers and whatnot. World Rugby is basically giving themselves a big old pat on the back for that one, saying that it has, uh, their changes have reduced the unnecessary stoppages, but... Um, the fact that they stop the game for water breaks these days seems to be giving the impression of disrupting the game and they basically want water to be taken at kind of more natural breaks like during goal kicks and whatnot to reduce disruption of the game. I guess you do get a little bit like uh, American style sports when you have the dedicated water breaks, right? The MLR actually does that. They do water breaks and it's just an excuse for um, to run some ads to do commercial breaks. So... Um, if you are going to have set water breaks, you might as well run commercials if they're going to get more money in the game, even though um, none of us fans really want to sit there watching ads. But um, if they're going to have a break, watch an ad or watch a player drinking water, there's not that much difference. You're not watching any action. But yeah, well, World Rugby seems to be pretty happy with how that one's gone. Um, penalizing negative actions and players supporting their body weight. These are kind of pretty generic ones. They want to get rid of guys who are like um, players who trap other players in the ruck to try and milk a penalty. Players who, after a penalty has been awarded against their team, they take the ball, kick it away, or walk off with it. They want to get rid of that kind of stuff. They're saying it's kind of negative. Uh, player, that kind of stuff needs to be pinged. I guess that's fair enough. But, I mean, it's, it's again, it's a, it's a change of habits because players always, like if a scrum half's got the ball and his team gets pinged at scrum time, he's always going to walk off with the ball. He's always going to roll the ball away or something. So the opposition can't take it quickly. But that's what they want to stamp down on. Again, it's, it's going to be a habitual change. You need to enforce it and enforce it regularly to stop players doing that. Uh, and then supporting their body weight, you're looking at ruck time, mall time, uh, tackle players need to release immediately, that kind of thing. Again, it needs to be regularly enforced to see a change of habit. Um, I'm, I'm kind of uh, a little bit dubious about how many changes we will actually see uh, for that one. And uh, the last one, clarify deliberate knock-ons. Deliberate knock-ons, I think, are a bit of a, a bit of a bugbear in rugby because um, obviously they say there's a law that says you must not deliberately knock the ball on, but it's not a deliberate knock-on if there was a reasonable expectation of regaining possession. So it comes down to that referee's judgment call, doesn't it? And um, basically, the way the refs have seemed to interpret things recently is if you go for it with two hands, you're probably safe. If you stick out one mitt and don't get it, you're probably in hot water. That's just generally not always true, but that's generally the way uh, I see it be controlled most of the time. That's the way the refs interpret it. The trouble with that is, like I had a two minute look at an Andrew Ford highlights package of best intercept tries. Many of them involved guys sticking a mitt out and regaining position of the ball. Um, like if, if I took a screenshot of it, you'd look at that and go, hmm. Not sure if he's going to regather the ball there because it's just a mitt stuck out. 
Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. So the whole, it's a reasonable expectation to regather the ball is, is honestly a pretty tough one. And I feel like a lot of the times guys get pinged for it, they're not actually being cynical. They are genuinely just going by rugby instincts to try and intercept the ball. But um, it's obviously, a, it's a fine line. So um, the line there is that the referees need to show good judgment. Well, again, show them some highlight packages of, his, of um, great intercept tries. And you'll see a number of one-handed jobbies, which, I don't know, may not have been reasonable, but are still possible. So maybe reasonable needs to become possible in the wording. But anyway, there you go. World Rugby is looking to enforce some laws rather than making actual wholesale changes. They just want to see some laws enforced. Um, I'm on the fence whether how many of them are actually realistically possible. Certainly controlling the kick time seems a pretty obvious one. Hurrying up the forwards at line out and scrum time, I think, is probably uh, unlikely unless you get all your refs going really hard on it. I don't think, because as I said, players want to waste time and take a break. I don't see the players uh, changing that habit unless you go really hard with it. Um, less reliance on TMO, I think I would be pretty happy to see that because, um, like I said, there's too many, too many replays that go for five minutes. And again, that gives players a rest, doesn't it? And that's what's making huge players who can't who are always looking to take a break because they're used to taking breaks um but yeah you guys let us know your thoughts what do you reckon can you see any real changes coming here or do you think it's all just a bit of hot air you guys let us know your thoughts and double talk to you guys again soon together